As the summer season begins, new attractions are opening, and SeaWorld Orlando has introduced an exciting addition, Penguin Trek. This B&M family-launched roller coaster is a prototype marking another bold investment by SeaWorld. Despite the risks, it has already delivered outstanding performance. Naturally, I was eager to experience this ride as soon as possible. So upon entering the park, we immediately headed towards the new attraction. So we're back at SeaWorld, it's been a while. Uh... We got a ride Penguin Trek, new family coaster here at SeaWorld. I'm very excited to go check it out. As we approached the refurbished Antarctica area, the recent enhancements were immediately noticeable. So here we go, we're entering the updated Antarctica. Let's go check out Penguin Trek. Ooh, we already got a look at merch, let's go take a look. The icebergs gleamed with a fresh coat of paint and new informational displays about penguins and Antarctica added educational value to the surroundings. Additionally, a new drink stand named South Pole Sips has been introduced, further enriching the visitor experience. You can definitely notice they've touched up a lot of the paint to make it look a lot nicer. And some new facts as well. As you approach the entrance, you'll immediately notice the stunning new sign. SeaWorld consistently excels with its entrance signage, and this one is no exception. Upon entering the former Empire of the Penguin queue, nostalgia sets in, reminding you of the old trackless dark ride. And we're in line for right, Penguin Trek. Side. It looks very nice seeing this area again, walking through it again. It's taking me back to all those rides I had on Antarctica. You can just tell they've refreshed all the glaciers, all the ice structures. It's a really, really nice improvement. Instead of entering a pre-show, you now find yourself in an updated queue building, meticulously themed to resemble a control base for an Antarctica mission. The queue is filled with snow gear, maps, and other thematic elements, enhancing the immersive experience. The queue is divided into two sections. The first resembles a storage room for future expeditions gear, while the second serves as a control center where Trek data is logged. The attention to detail in the queue's theming is impressive, and Floridians will greatly appreciate the predominantly indoor layout. Ascending a set of stairs, you turn to catch your first glimpse of the station. The overhead walkway provides a fantastic first impression of the attraction. The station's theming continues to impress, featuring themed row signs and a convenient baggage hold. One particularly commendable aspect of Penguin Trek is the allowance for guests to bring their bags in line, with a designated area to place them, avoiding the need for lockers. A thoughtful touch compared to many other coasters. As you board your vehicle, pull down the lap bar, and prepare for the trek ahead, you'll find the car spacious and the lap bar and seat exceptionally comfortable. The new generation over-the-shoulder lap bar design is minimal, comfortable, and well-suited for an attraction of this caliber. With the lap bar secured, your trek begins as you dispatch out of the station. As you exit the station, you are immediately immersed in the icy landscape of Antarctica, surrounding you with frozen structures and a jet ski with leftover gear resting atop. You pass a massive screen displaying scenes of penguins and Antarctica, leading you into a small dip illuminated by strobe lights. After a brief turnaround, you enter an ice cavern adorned with penguin carvings, and then you approach your first launch. This dark ride section is expertly crafted, providing a unique start compared to other SeaWorld coasters, with impressive theming. Plus, it pays tribute to the Empire of the Penguin dark ride, with plenty of scenes resembling very similar areas of that old dark ride. The first launch packs a solid punch, propelling you into a turnaround, transitioning you into the flip flap. Next, you twist down into a small camelback, followed by a steep turnaround leading you into a stangle dive, one of my favorite parts of the attraction. You rise into a helix before diving into the second launch, which delivers another exhilarating boost. This is followed by a large overbank turn, twisting you down into an S-bend, a small drop, and then a final turnaround. You then enter the final break run, concluding your thrilling adventure on Penguin Trail. Oh, As you exit the attraction, you'll find the viewing window that was featured on the old dark ride, and walk out into the former queue for Antarctica Empire of the Penguin. I thought this was interesting how they really didn't touch up this area at all, it was the exact same from the original. And then you'll merge with the queue line for the penguin exhibit. If there's one negative thing I have to say, I found it weird that you have to merge into another line just to get out of the attraction. Cause now the exit process takes up to 5 to 10 minutes. 
because you'll then enter another pre-show area, then entering the Antarctica exhibit to see the penguins. While this is amazing and it is freezing cold and does feel really nice, it just adds on to the process. You'll then exit out into the gift shop, concluding your experience completely on Penguin Trek. So Penguin Trek is a really good ride. Now that I've gotten a few rides on it, I can really understand um, the feel for this ride. And it really is a cute roller coaster. Cute is the best way to describe it because it's not the tallest, it's not the fastest, it's not the longest. There's nothing this ride does that's very unique. There's nothing this ride does that's insanely special, but that's the purpose of it and that's what I like. The fact that the ride has two launches, a bunch of twists and turns, no inversions, nothing too scary, no airtime, that's honestly what the purpose of this ride is and that's what's good with it. Cyril's always had a huge hole in their lineup and it was the family ride. They've tried to fill it in so many times, but it never works. Journey to Atlantis, yes, it's a family ride, but it is intimidating. Icebreaker was designed for families, but the expectation did not meet the reality is that thing was super intense and super powerful. Penguin Trek does both of these phenomenally. It fixes the issue of having a ride that doesn't look too intimidating and the ride itself isn't too intimidating. It's perfect. It's fun. It's a blast. It's very comfortable. It's just a great coaster overall. So yes, while it's nothing special, it's not one of my personal favorites, that's the point of this ride and it finally filled that hole in SeaWorld's lineup phenomenally. So overall, Penguin Trek, for the purpose of what it's supposed to do, is absolutely fantastic and a home run for SeaWorld. That line will never be short, it'll always be long, and that's exactly what this ride is for, essentially. The layout of this ride is enjoyable and well-suited for families. While it may not have standout moments, airtime, or intense forces, that's precisely its intent. SeaWorld has successfully addressed a long-standing need for a family coaster. Although the ride isn't the smoothest, which is somewhat puzzling since it just opened, it remains an excellent addition overall. The first launch is definitely the highlight, and the dark ride section is genuinely enjoyable. The layout is ideal for its intended purpose, and if the ride proves to be reliable, SeaWorld and B&M have a winner on their hands. While it may not be the greatest coaster of all time, SeaWorld now boasts an impressive and diverse lineup suitable for the entire family. They didn't need to add the biggest and baddest attraction because they already have some of those. From attractions for young children to rides that challenge those ready to face their fears and thrilling experiences for thrill seekers, SeaWorld Orlando offers something for everyone. So I highly recommend visiting to experience Penguin Trek for yourself. And to stay updated on all our content here at Theme Park Hunting, make sure to subscribe and turn on those post notifications so you never miss an episode. For high quality POVs or off rides, check out our second channel, TPH Productions. We have exciting projects in the pipeline, so stay tuned for more updates. This has been Hunter from Theme Park Hunting, and I'll see you all later.